Amongst the several memorials found in Aberdeen, there are two of significant interest to our family. Both can be found in Pokra Key in Footy. Amongst the fallen listed here, you'll find the names of two men who, despite never having met, figure as part of our family history. On the Food Day Memorial, you can read the name of Richard Cox, who died in France in 1970, whilst the Dock Labourers Memorial bears the name of Gilbert Baxter, aged 49 who died in the same year. As far as we know, there are no known photographs of either of these two men. So in this year, in the centenary of their passing, I'd like to tell you what we know of their stories. Both Richard and Gilbert were born in the last quarter of the 19th century. Born on Friday the 7th October 1881, Richard was the fifth child of Thomas and Agnes Cox, who at the time lived in 44 East North Street in Aberdeen. For a reason that remains unknown, Richard's sister Fanny Cox moved to Canada in the early part of the century. This passenger list shows that in 1909, Richard went over by steamship to visit his sister with a letter for her. Four years later, in January 1913, Richard had made a return trip to Canada with his younger brother, James. We don't know whether Richard returned to Scotland after this visit, although it seems his brother took up residence from this point in Ontario. Richard was living in Canada when calls went out for new recruits to assist the war effort. Richard enlisted for the Canadian Overseas Expeditionary Force while his wife Rachel and son Richard were still resident at 35 East North Street. Initial training took place over the next four months before making the transatlantic crossing from Montreal to England on the 6th of November 1915. The Canadian troops arrived in Portsmouth 10 days later and embarked for the front line on the 20th of February 1916. In total, Richard would see active service over the next year and a half, by which time he had transferred battalions twice. Richard's last few months were spent in the 87th Battalion following the famous Battle of Vimy Ridge in April 1917. 
Between August 15 and the 25th, Canadian forces captured a strategic position on the northern approach to the city of Lens, in what is now known as the Battle of Hill 70. And over the ten days of fighting, Richard sadly figured amongst 9,198 casualties. This is the war diary entry of the day that Richard was killed. Considerable artillery activity. In the afternoon, the brick kiln was very heavily shelled. We suffered about 15 casualties and also had a large number of men buried. It was clear that Richard was amongst those who were buried that day. This burial record remains a sad testament to the fact that Richard's body was buried under a pile of bricks and could not be recovered. He was survived by his son Richard, who was eight years old when his father died and his widowed wife, Rachel Morris D. Cox, the sole benefactor in his military will. 700 miles away, Richard's name is also inscribed in the Vimy Memorial in France, Canada's largest overseas war memorial. Although we know less of Gilbert Baxter, enough documentation survives to help us understand his own involvement in the Great World War and the tragic circumstances of his death. Gilbert was born in Glasgow on Friday the 11th of January 1867. We don't know when Gilbert himself moved to Aberdeen. But we know from 1901, he was married to one Elizabeth Anderson, then aged 33. During the years of the Great War, Gilbert's trade was that of a trimmer, responsible for trimming the coal in the ship bunkers and moving it to the stoker's home. In 1917, Gilbert was working on board the SS Recepto, a trawler built in 1914 that had been requisitioned and renamed by the Royal Navy to operate as a minesweeper. Sadly, on the 16th of February 1917, Gilbert lost his life, just south of Hartlepool in Tees Bay. Like Richard Cox, some six months later, Gilbert's body was never recovered for burial. The Aberdeen Memorial is not the only place that you'll find Gilbert's involvement in the war inscribed. Nearly 580 miles to the south, you'll find his name amongst the thousands commemorated on the Portsmouth Naval Memorial. All of us have to realize that without their sacrifice, we could not be here today enjoying the freedom and the privileges and the wonderful life that we are leading. They made the supreme sacrifice to make sure that we would be free and able to do what we are doing today.
Well, we're all gathered here in this fairly awful day to pay tribute to my grandfather, Gilbert Baxter, who fought and died in the First World War. He was a member of the Royal Naval Reserve and he died in a converted trawler. They were hunting for German mines at the time and he unfortunately, along with five of his other comrades, died at sea 100 years ago, practically to the day. I never knew him, of course, because uh, I can only tell what my mother said of him and said he was a, a very, very excellent father and a very generous and kind man. Him and all the rest of the brave people who died in both wars, I lay this wreath in honour of Gilbert and all of the comrades that fell with him. They shall not grow old as those who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. The going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne, we'll tack a cup of oh, kindness yet for old lang syne. For old lang syne, my dear, for Time. 